Okay, here we go. Jersey Droz, all that stuff up there above my head that you can see is information about me. What do I do? I make comics. That's what we're looking at. Looking at me making comics right now. Uh, coloring comics and clip studio paint. This is another page of the Captain Seriously book that I am finishing up. Uh, as you can see, panel one is already finished. I got panels two, three, and four to do the shading on. Flats are done. Got the flats all done. As a matter of fact, uh, next week's Lena Tart cast is going to be about how I do flatting in comics. That lenatart.com. <clears throat> all right. It, let's just jump in and do it. Matter of fact, let's make my flats layer a reference layer so that I can use my magic wand tool to refer other layers and refer to the reference layer. No area scaling on anti-aliasing off. <clears throat> Apply to connected pixels only, meaning that it's only going to select. Uh, let's, let's turn off that closed gap. This green appears several places on the flats layer, right? It's on her costume. It's on her costume there. Uh, so by turning off, or rather uh, toggling on, apply to connected pixels only, it means it's, it's only going to select whatever is touching the other pixels. So it's not going to select her green over here. And let's get my rocket's palette, because that's got my shadows and highlights. What pen do I have here? Okay. And go to my shadows layer, which is set to 50% opacity and layer mode multiply. So it will mix the colors with the colors underneath, like so. Normally, I would have my overhead cam on so you could see, like, I'm actually doing the, you see the pen strokes, you're not just watching them happen on the screen, but my uh, overhead camera is not working right today, so I had to switch to an alternate setup. And I'm tempted to go on a little jag about uh, adaptability and how, like, important that is. I introduced myself as a cartoonist and teaching artist and both, I feel like both jobs really demand. Um, oh yeah. You can't see my, my Bob Cratchit clubs when I'm working right now. Um, hello, Rachel. But adaptability, you know, that's, that's one of those things that like, I think all any line of work calls for, a degree of adaptability, being flexible. Um, oops, don't turn that off. Turn the key that selection on. You go to your highlights layer now. Grab your highlight color and take that gradient. The oh goodness gracious, there we go. Um, like I said, I imagine that all jobs require a degree of adaptability, but um. Or at least everybody benefits from being adaptable. But yeah, I, I, I fussed with my overhead camera for about 10, 15 minutes and then just realized I'm, I'm wasting uh, time that I could be drawing. So when you're up against the deadline, you just, you work with what you got and in my experience, it's almost never an ideal scenario. Never. I've never encountered a job where it's like this. Everything about this is perfect. That shadow on his nose is really bugging me. Let's take that down a little bit. Okay. Okay. But uh, oops, whoops, 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 wrong layer. I want to do it on the flats layer. There we go. 
And then I want to deselect and reselect all the dark blues. So my overhead camera is actually an old iPhone. Um, an iPhone, what is this? And it, it's the first SE they made. Um, so it's, I guess it's quite old. Um, struggling with my resentment about how quickly technology gets outmoded. Um, but the camera on it is pretty darn good. And so I put an NDI app on it so that it could broadcast the camera out as a webcam and then it could be picked up by my OBS and then funneled in as the source. And it's, it's, it works fine. Um, make this a clipping layer. It works fine, but it's not super reliable. It does get a little bit buggy and crashy, and today it was just like, it's like not recognizing it as a source at all. Well, actually OBS was recognizing it as a source, but then OBS said, but I can't see what's in that source. So it was just like a blank thing. So that was a drag. I'll have to troubleshoot that later. Back to my flats. Rather to my highlights layer. Highlights on those gloves, and then a couple of shadows. Real quick and dirty. Yeah, this 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 NDI technology is is relatively new. A company named New Tech put it out, and it's free. And I mean, Skype works with it now too. So that's something I've been doing with the Lena Tarkcast is um, routing. Rob's Skype video. So like when in the Skype call, rather than doing like a screen grab and like, you know, capturing that part of the screen where Rob's video is, it just feeds his entire HD video in as a source that I can put into OBS. Because when we do it with Zoom, I have to actually like grab, like like put the put the app in a certain place and then grab just that part of the screen and then route it as a source. And it's really low res. It looks really it, it's it's serviceable, but it's not awesome. Uh, but with NDI, I can route him in as a source, and he'll be HD. I have the full full image, regardless of where my Skype window is. Um, and you can have, like, right now, the way I'm doing this with my uh, Clip Studio Paint is I'm actually working on a second computer that is hardwired by Ethernet into my streaming computer and using NDI to broadcast from an instance of OBS on my ViOZ canvas to the big machine it's pretty darn neat and so like a lot of people are, are sort of a lot of the discussion around webcams right now is like well why would you invest in a webcam if an old phone has like probably even better resolution and you can route it in as a source with ndi but as we saw today this is yeah yeah exactly right it's it's uh with the with the phone, you're going to get a much better resolution image than you would, say, with a Logitech C220 or whatever those are. One that, the one that I'm actually using for my webcam right now. So it's pretty cool, but like I said, I've just been running into like issues with stability on it. I, I might need to try using like my actual proper phone for that, which be kind of a drag. I would I'd rather not, but gotta be has gotta be. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I think I got all of Dino Gator there. You know what I didn't do on Dino Gator? Oh my goodness gracious. I goofed. I forgot to put his belly green on him. Go to my flats layer, and I'll just paint that in real fast.
Because yeah, I don't know how it is for y'all who are watching, but I imagine it's probably at least like slightly more interesting to actually see the artist's hand doing this rather than just seeing the lines just come to come to be on the image. At least I would find that more interesting. So that's one of the reasons I was doing that. There we go. The shadows. My shadow colors. It's, it's been an interesting experience following through with this commitment to stream at least two hours a week while I'm drawing because I am just, this is the thing about like that adaptability stuff I was talking about earlier. It's like the moment you make a plan, suddenly encounter all of the ways that that, that plan can go funky, go sideways, and you got to just be ready to deal with it. And part of being adaptable, I think anyway, is sort of keeping your head when unexpected things happen. This is all achievable. This is all solvable. This is fine. As long as no lives are on the line, it's nothing to panic about um let's see let's do cat and yardley now i think with these figures in the back i'm just going to grab all their colors because i don't think i can do any oh captain yardley i did the colors wrong on you i was i was really blasting through these flats last night i was trying to get these done in like 20 minutes or less you can see where i did some sloppy work here Yeah, I guess it's emotional maturity. That That is a way of thinking about it. But I mean, I, I don't want to ignore my privilege in that. Like, I don't think I, I have any uh, underlying mental health issues. I mean, um, I don't want to just, and I'm not saying that you're saying this, Rachel, but I'm just, I feel, I want to be careful to make sure that to say that uh, I don't think this is as simple as like, buckle, you know, like buck up, get get in there and, Stop, stop your balling. <laughs> and also to be fair to people is that I have my meltdowns. I have made no secret out of the fact that in the Boulder and Fleet comic, Mining for Trouble, the character Sapphire, the, the, the little girl with the green hair who runs the Mineral Girl Bandits, um, her meltdowns are totally my meltdowns. Like, that's how I get when I'm, like, really worked up about something. And, like, I start using words like commitment. You know, it's like, I have a commitment to this thing. I guess you're just not as committed as I am. Oh, I totally, maybe that those words don't leave my head or my mouth, but they certainly rattle around in my head. I get very petulant. And so like, it, I, I felt like I was putting myself on blast when I was writing the scene where the girls abandon her. Um, she's like trapped in a... Uh, oh gosh, I could, I could actually pull it up on I've got the book right here because I was actually talking about it in a class. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm going to switch to my big camera so you can see this real quick. So it's this scene here where the, the girls abandon her and she's trapped in this like crushed like mine car thing and she has this total meltdown. Uh, and it, like it, it goes from like, you know, starts out with like a little bit of rage and, and hurt 
to like outrage and defiance to like just plain hurt, right? Like here at the end, she's just like, you know, there, there we go. Still a little bit of anger in there, but it's more like dealing with the hurt of like, you're not in this thing with me, right? So that's all just a long way of saying, um, it's complicated. <laughs> But I do have a ritual that I go through in my head when things don't go right. I'm like, okay, well, are our lives on the line? No. Then let's just work with what we got. This is a, this is a, a, a live stream where I'm drawing comics. I'm not doing surgery. I'm not diffusing a bomb. And actually, <laughs> I would argue that those things call for a lot more focus and maturity than what I'm doing here. I was actually thinking about this. I, I was I tweeted something recently. I retweeted something that Nate Picos of Blambot posted about um oh what was it? It was something to do with uh our relationship with overworking. And like really like crafting this narrative of like, oh I work like 70 hours a week and like how that's not only like harmful to us but like it, emp it empowers an entire system of, of abusing workers right and I just retweeted and said like oh I'm so busted on this I used to think that I used to uh, what is it like conflate being frazzled with commitment like I I am so commitment committed to this stuff because I'm at my wits end That's good enough. <laughs> oh, thank you. I that that Baron von Bear image uh, is actually from uh, what was it? It was Inktober two years ago now. Um, is part of the Baron von Bear pitch that I put together in thirty days. Um, thirty days. I had to qualify that with the fact that I had been working on the story for that that pitch for a number of years. Um, so the production of the pitch, like the, the, the actual, like writing out the outline, drawing all the assets and sample pages that all happened in 30 days. But like, there's a lot of pre-work done ahead of time. Don't want anybody to misunderstand what I did there. But yeah, I, I'm really happy with that little drawing of Baron Bomb Bear with his his wisps all dancing around him and how their trail is sort of the trail they leave is like sort of uh, designed to be a, a signifier of their personality, right? Both the color and the trail tells you is supposed to tell you who they are, or at least give you a chance to make some guesses about who they are. hard to be in the position of no one else is going to do this right so i guess it's gonna be me staying here 30 extra hours versus what actually happens if you just stop for the day yeah now i want to look up that tweet because I, I, now i'm starting to think like what what did i actually say and what did nate actually say and what was my point <laughs> oh what did i say Ah, freelancers humble bragging about working seven days a week will eventually pay for it with their health. And an employer who expects you to trade your health for a buck is deplorable. I quit working like that years ago. Some of those health issues still stick around. Be smarter. Now, you know, as somebody who is definitely a people pleaser, have been ever since I was a little kid, um, this is a tough thing to navigate, right? Because, like, you want to be an awesome awesome member of the team you want to prove your value you want to contribute 
And then also, there's that. And this, this is also part of like my baggage, and I'm and I'm gonna own it. Is somebody who's like really kind of gets high on the hero's journey narrative and like what that represents in our psychology and in our culture. Um, the idea of, of like, like I love Dwayne Johnson, the rock, but like some of the stuff he says, I think like points towards this, like always be the hardest working person in the room. Right. Um, and I get what he's saying there, but I feel like that attitude, it, it's been, it's been dangerous. I've found it to be a dangerous drug. And then I think, well, I don't want to disappoint anybody after all. So I think I, I better work hard too. So then I get, I get this double whammy, right? I get this double whammy of like, well, I'm not letting anybody down. Um, cause I'm people pleaser, but then also I'm super committed to this thing. I'm so committed. Um, and suddenly, and I've told the story in other places, I find myself fainting at my day job. Walked into work that morning. I was like, hey, I, you know, I don't feel so great. And boom, I'm on the floor. Thankfully, I worked at a healthcare organization as a graphic designer because I was surrounded by nurses right after that. And their question for me was, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this to yourself? And I did not have a good answer. All right, Jersey, what are you doing here? Why are you going to go in here and put in a little highlight line on that wall? Think anybody's going to care or notice? No, but I will. That's good. Do the computer monitor. Let's get a real glow in there. And let's even throw in some concept brush. Come on. There we go. Same deal. Computer. Too bright. And the shadows are okay. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. Good to see you again. Yeah, this was... It's interesting, because, uh, like... I hand inked it, or hand hand inked it. Oh my gosh, what a revealing thing to say! I inked it on paper. Oh my gosh, I got so mad at somebody for saying that before, and I know I've said it on these live streams. Like when that artist said, like they said, you use computers. Like no, I draw with my hands. Ugh. I ink this on paper. And it's weird to get really up close to my ink work on paper because I can just see all the crudeness and roughness to it. And I'm just like, oh, I want to refine that so bad, but it's not going to show up in the printed edition. I'm up too close. Calm down, Jersey. Calm down. It's okay. You got this. It's going to be serviceable. Jonathan just said it looked great. What's your problem? did a 95 hour week earlier this year, Rachel. Oh my gosh. Put in the red flag category and cautious about it happening again. It was software. Yeah. See, I, I can only imagine what it's like with software. Uh, I remember one of my earliest graphic design jobs when I was like, when I was a kid, I was like 24 or something like that kid. I'm sorry to any 24 year olds watching. You're like, I'm not a kid. I'm like, I know, I know. 
But like my perspective was so different when I was 24 to now. It feels like a whole lifetime ago. Um, and we were starting, I was starting a job as a, as a lead graphic designer at a uh, real estate magazine, which meant that I like made grids of houses, right? All GDI mock uh, at Keller Williams Realty, you know? Um, anyway, but they were starting up this whole new thing where it was going to be, um, instead of like, all the files hosted locally. It was gonna, all the files would be hosted on a database, and we were going to route everything in through Quark Express. And then it was th that database would also be repurposed to make like a, a dynamically generated website or something like that. Um, so there was I was like simultaneously designing a magazine, putting together all the listings, but then also like formatting everything in such a way so that our web team could like this is like two thousand one, something in the neighborhood. Anyway. They put a deadline on it and it wasn't the most realistic deadline. And so, or maybe it was, but it's just like crunch time happened, right? Like, like two months into the job, crunch time happened and it was tough. Yeah. Quark Express. Remember that? Uh, that was before InDesign. I remember when InDesign came along, and I was just like, harumph, what do I need this for? Quark Express does everything fine. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I like your language, uh, both Jonathan and um, and Rachel, but I, I like this idea of like using it as a warning sign, right? It's like, okay, let's not do that again. Let's try to watch out for that when that happens. And maybe sometimes, like in the case of like the, the thing I was talking about, it... it feels almost kind of unavoidable because if you're in new territory, you can only do so much planning, right? You can only plan for so much and say like, okay, well, there's going to be unknowns that you just can't anticipate. There we go. I think... Oh, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to do one more thing. I want this background to have like a little bit of metallicness to it. So I'm going to go back to my highlights layer. And I'm going to grab my highlights. And I'm going to grab, this is a Ray Friendin brush. And it's called Concept Textured Round. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Just give a few streaks of shine on the wall. There we go. But yeah, it, I feel like this is something that I hope we can have more conversations around. And as a matter of fact, today on the Lena Tart cast, Rob and I decided that our, our topic is going to be our relationship with rest. Celebrating rest. Oops. Look in this layer. Do some color holds real quick on these computer grids. They can move on to the last two panels. Well, how much time we got? Oh, oh man, we're doing fine. Thank you for having this this conversation with me about uh, overworking yourself. Live streams where we can have the real talk. Trademark. And I don't I don't think it's as simple as you know, uh rich and powerful people perpetrated this culture upon us. I think this is something that when we're younger I think stories tell us this in, in, in our unsophisticated younger minds. We, we, in, we internalize it in weird ways. Like I was talking about, like I get really hung up on like the hero's journey kind of stuff and like using that as a metaphor for a lot of things. And I'll talk about things like battling my demons and you know, stuff like that, which is like, Hmm, think about that language, Jersey. I know, I know what you're saying, but maybe, maybe there's another way to do it. Maybe you can reconcile with your demons. Maybe you can integrate your demons. Um, maybe your demons have something to tell you that you're not 
paying as close attention to. Maybe instead of conquering them, and this is actually, speaking of Baron Von Baer, that's basically the, the point of the, of the story that I'm, I'm hoping to explore if I get to do it, is this idea of like heroes, what if heroes heal, right? Like that's in Percival, right? Percival does all of this like yomping around in the forest adventurous, but really what his job was, was to say to the king, like what ails you? We have examples of that, but I feel like Moana was a good one for that. Like Moana, like the ending of that movie kind of like caught me, like I had to catch my breath because like when I realized what was happening and what they were doing with it, I was like, oh, thank goodness. You showed somebody face the monster and say that you're, this isn't who you are. And it worked. So I feel like it was both like a timely kind of story, but also a very timeless kind of story because like we have other examples in history of those kinds of adventures. But I think when we're younger and less sophisticated, we can simplify it. Like when I was 10, I didn't get choked up when Luke Skywalker threw his lightsaber away and said to the emperor, you failed your highness, right? Like, like that didn't, I was like, why is he giving up? That's weird, you know? As an adult, whenever I watch that scene, goosebumps, total goosebumps. I'm like, that's the climax right there. <laughs> oh, Rachel. Oh, we are similarly aligned. <laughs> oh. Yes, I, I am totally, totally use that language on myself. Like, ah. I am so looking forward to what transformation awaits me, right? Oh my gosh, that laugh was not laughing at you. That was the laughter of shared pain. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I only, I, I, I know that you knew that. It's just that I, I did that recently in a class with, with eighth graders where they're asking me like, what do you do when you look at your old work and you hate it? And I laugh that way. And I could see the kid kind of like, like, why is he laughing at me? That wasn't funny. I'm, I'm, I'm being vulnerable here. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, I totally get you. And I sympathize. That is super tough. What's going on here? Come on. I want to put that away. Put that back. Is that on the art? All right, fine. What the devil? All right, I'm going to turn this mask off real quick. I don't know where that white's coming from. Oh, I know where that white's coming from. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I believe I know the truth. There it is. It was on that layer. This is what happens when you work with multiple layers. Okay. Save your work. I am... Almost ready for panel two, three. Okay. Panel three. No. I'm just going to highlight everything. I wanted to get through this fast. Okay. Come on. See, if, if, if it, my overhead camera would have been working, you would have seen me like trying to pinch to zoom and not working. What are you missing out on? Because my NDI plugin isn't working.
another story like animated film that did this really well and like i just found it to be so inspiring and i wish i would see this happening in more children's media is the book of life i don't know if anybody's seen that there's this marvelous scene where the hero is confronting a literal monster it's like it's a it's, a, it's the spirits of all of the bulls that his family has slain in bullfights and he's got to fight it and it seems very obvious like this is going to be a battle and you can't do anything about it you it's it's non-negotiable and the boy breaks out his guitar and sings this song of apology and it like just puts all the spirits to rest And like when I'm watching it, I'm literally doing the thing where I'm like, oh, 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 to the person next to me. <laughs> I get so excited when I see that. get it all now nah, let's do a little bit around here so this character turnbuckle tootweiler is really designed to be sort of the vessel for young kids and like he he sort of like expresses their experience in a lot of the stories and since this story is about like managing your emotions I thought he, he has to have a temper tantrum. The feelings happen, they take him over, and he can't control it. There's something kind of upsetting about trying like a giant muscly man like having a stomping fit like this, though, right? Like, especially a hero. It's one thing to have like Cobra Commander do this. Cobra Commander is like a petulant brat, but... Have I seen Modest Heroes? It's not in the same storytelling category, but it's a series of three short anime on Netflix about people overcoming things. I have not seen it. Uh... I will have to make a note of it because I'm currently taking a break from Netflix. Like, I, I canceled my subscription for a while, just for a little while. And part of it was because I was like, well, I'm really not enjoying anything I'm watching on here right now. Let's try out some other stuff for a while. But if, if you recommend it, Rachel, I, I, I'm sure it's worth watching. Okay, now where? Ah, Dame Lady Cat. Am I going to finish this on time? I think I am. I'm going to finish this on time. There's another theme of my live streams is hearing me verbalize my anxiety about the clock. So you all know I, I keep track of my tasks in this thing called the Emergent Task Planner. I've been talking about it for almost... Well, yeah, just about a decade now. I have eight, eight or nine years worth of tracking in those those things. And uh, one of the things I do is when I actually hit my, um, I estimate the time it's going to take me to do each thing that I do. And then when I hit my mark, I draw a little smiley face next to it. I'm like, oh, you did it. Good job. What a good boy are you? I know it's silly, but. People talk about like how do you how do you reward yourself? Do you like you know eat candy, play a video game? No, for me it's just like writing a little happy face next to a thing. Yeah, I wonder if Modest Heroes might be on Crunchyroll, which um, I don't have a premium account on that, but I mean I can stream Crunchyroll. I, I'll give that. A, I'll I'll look for it there. Modest Heroes. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> yes, Rachel, you've heard. Well, I don't. I don't think that makes you a stalker. I think it means that you've actually like listened to me talking on like my various podcasts, right? It's like, and I do. Yeah, I color code all my tasks, and I just introduced a new one. I had to get my second color pen um, because I had to introduce two new categories this year. So, where did my second pen go? Oh, it just fell out on the floor. But yeah, I, and I. So I introduced uh, orange and dark blue as colors for categories. One, orange because I realized that I am not super awesome at letting the world know about the stuff that I do. And it's like, of course, George, so you do a podcast where you talk every week about things you make. Yeah, well, I heard from a lot of people last year who wanted to buy my books uh, around the holidays. And they're like, I don't even know how to get them. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, I have a, a link on my, my webpage that says buy my books. <laughs> <laughs> it takes you to a listing of all my books where they're all linked to where you can buy them in the store. But they didn't know to go there. Um, so marketing was one of the goals this year that I, I want to I address. And that's part of the reason I'm doing these live streams is like to create a heartbeat of, this is what I do. I'm a cartoonist. People like Rachel, who follow my stuff closely, it's like, you know where to find the stuff. But like, there's a lot of people who don't. Um, so yeah, I introduced orange as my color for marketing tasks, and then I've got dark blue for my advocacy work because that's taking up a lot more of my time than it used to. It always took up a lot of my time, but now it's becoming like, I mean, it's literally a day job. Come on. Yeah, that's good enough. Oh, up. Oh. Dad blast it. Oh my gosh, is this panel done? I think it is. Nope, it's not quite. I want to put some extra details. Not extra details. I just want to put a little bit of um, shine on Captain Yarley's tech stuff. go to the holds. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I do I do try hard to capture like both big Stuff like this, like this ridiculous over the top, his face is like contorting. Uh, but then also try to capture things a little bit more subtle. And, and uh, given that this is a story for, again, kids who are learning how to manage their feelings, I wanted to show that there's a consequence to having these tantrums. And that is look at the people around you and how they're reacting to how you're acting, right? Your feelings are so big. They're too big for your body. Well, yeah, they're too big for everybody's body right now. Look at this. And then I get got all Ralph Bakshi in the background here in this panel. Right? It's like 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 uh, his Lord of the Rings movie or Wizards. But again, I wanted to like kind of summon sort of a. Actually, you know what I'm thinking of is, um, and I know I've talked about this other places too, is that uh, UPA cartoon, um, the Telltale Heart. Uh, narrated by James Mason. And like they use a lot of this kind of texture in the background to like indicate like the building madness.
Oh, come now. Because I only have... Jersey, you only have 14 minutes to finish this. You can do it. I believe in you. This pen I'm using is not my usual pen, or this brush is not the one I usually use for my digital work. And it, it its pressure curve sensitivity is like a little funky. It doesn't taper the way the one I usually use does. The one I usually use has more of a texture to it, and I feel like it wasn't appropriate for this project because this... I'm trying to match this to the early work, which had like a lot of really sharp, like cuts and grads kind of coloring. Like where you use like the, the lasso tool and like do a lot of gradients and it has like a very sharp and polished look. So I'm trying to go somewhere in between those two. This pen is not a little better. Now how am I to do this stomp? That's a question. Uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to do an, a layer above the line art, and I'm going to put some effects on here. But let's real quick just put some shadows on some of it just to give like a little bit of distinction between the different instances of his leg. And then I'm going to grab his boots and try to put a little shading on them just enough. You tell the difference a little bit between them, or maybe not. Maybe that might even muddle things more. No, it might. You know what? Nope, forget it. I'm not going to do shading in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a layer above the line art, make a new layer. I will name this later because my keyboard is not near me. Um, and I'm going to do some dry brush effects to emphasize the like so brush is too small there we go give it a little bit extra blur I don't think it needs any more. Well, you listen to me go back and forth in my own head. I'm going to do this background boot because I feel like that, that leg is stationary. And then it's color hold time where his foot's hitting the floor. What's going on there? That's weird. There we go. All, of it, all that's left is to color Dame Lady Cat, I think. 
Oh, we'll do a couple more color holds. So this is an effect that I haven't used in a comic in quite some time, but I used to love doing this. Um, these little, oh, that's my eraser. Get your pen. Sort of like these little like bubbles that appear on somebody's head when they're having a meltdown. Um, I think I used it in Boulder and Fleet. But like the first time I ever saw this was in an anime. It was actually the Transformers Robots in Disguise series from 2001. And they used it all the time. Whenever somebody would get upset or excited, like these little bubbles would pop up around their head. And I just adore that, that look. So I swiped it. I get everything. Come on, selection tool. We're in the home stretch. Question for those who exercise. Anybody in here who doesn't get any kind of like workout regimen? Are you the kind of person who looks at the clock to get a sense of how much time there's left to go? Or do you not look at the clock at all? Like just show up for your 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, and just do the stuff for the time that, that's there and just not pay attention to it? Or do you need to constantly look at the thing? Because I am totally, uh, okay, I want to check. 60 seconds left. <laughs> I have annoyed friends with that. It's like, just, just show up and do the thing. I need to have a sense of expectation. So, Rachel, you taped the Transformers on VHS in the 80s? That is super cool. Uh, I know I talked about it on the uh, Transformers podcast, but I remember like like really getting obsessed with like getting our VCR uh, sort of like optimized to get like the best compression and like the VCR we had. It wasn't one of those top loader dealies. It was like one of the more modern ones where you front load it. But there's this panel on the top that you could adjust sort of like, I don't know what you were actually adjusting now that I think about it. It's been a long time since I did this. But um, you could fine tune things about whether it was the signal coming in or was it the, the actual compression of the video? I don't remember what it was. Um, but like I, I would futz with the antenna, you know, it's like I gotta get, I gotta get like the best possible signal and then I'm going to mess with the VCR to make sure that it's like, and then make sure that the timer is set so that it catches the show. And I would even sometimes sit with the, the tape recorder and, and like when commercials would come out, I'd pause. And then, when, and then all of a sudden it'd be like, we now return to the Transformers. Okay, record. So I had to get those commercials out of there. In retrospect, I wish I would have kept them, but that's what YouTube's for. Pull up all those old commercials. And yes, Popples. Popples was actually not a bad cartoon, right? I mean, like it was it was Deke when Deke was really good. Like around the same time they were doing like the Littles and um oh gosh, what else was around that time? Well, the the first season of the Care Bears cartoon, which was also really, really well done. Well done for what it was, everybody. For those who were like, oh, it doesn't hold up. I'm like, well, yeah, it was a show for like first graders for crying out loud. It's gonna be about soapbox derbies and like kids like feeling sad and wishing that bears would come out of the clouds to help them. That's pretty awesome. Don't tell me that's not awesome. And that they save me with, with like love that comes out of their tummies. Come on. That's unassailable. Yeah. Inspector gadget was the same time too. Yeah. And that was, I remember watching that when it came on the air and I'm like, what is this? Like, like I was old enough to know that like, okay, there's something about the animation here that's different than everything else I'm watching. It's better. Don't get me wrong. I love Hanna-Barbera, but like when you see like that very 2D cardboardy kind of animation, then you see something like Inspector Gadget. It's like, what? And that I could like switch from that rubbery stuff, like when the gadget mobile would turn into like the race car mode, like it was very rubbery and, and wobbly, but yet everything felt solid and real for, for that reality. 
more of my uh I'm I'm tempted to make fun of my fascination with this stuff by saying this is useless information. It's not useless information, it's visual communication. I think I'm done. I think that's that's colored page three of Captain Seriously book for first graders. Oh, you know what? How much time I got? I have four minutes. Can I do some color holds in four minutes? Let's see if I can. I want to do some color holds to push back that background. And I'm going to see if I can do this in the time I have left. You find yourself with a little bit of bonus time. Now it's time to push the quality of the work just a little bit more. I was just having this conversation with my students about how really kind of getting into that idea of like art is abandoned. Because I, I, I lead my students through a lot of timed exercises and I say like, you got five minutes and if, you're, if you don't finish it, that's fine. But really don't focus on making it awesome. Just focus on getting the ideas on paper. Um, and I reassure them that like all the comics I've ever made, I never felt like I had enough time to do them. And that's okay. You learn to get as much as you can in the time that you got. And that is a whole nother skill set in and of skill set in and of itself. Okay. I'm gonna use a darker hold for the shadow areas, of course. Rip. Rip. <laughs> Oh, Rachel. Uh, most likely to marry Inspector Gadget and bring her house down with a magnifying glass. That's so funny. When Anne and I were on book tour for Rockets, like part of our presentation was how she, when she was a little kid, she wanted to marry Alf. And she, it, it was no lie because like, I have some of the stuff that she did when she was a kid. She has like these, these very labored illustrations of Alf. Like there's no way you were drawing that unless you were like spending a lot of time just thinking about how wonderful Alf is. Did I get it all? All right. And I did it with about 45 seconds to spare. That's amazing. I'm so happy. Uh, okay, well, that wraps up this live stream for Thursday, uh, January, what is it, 21st. Um, for those who are sticking around today, I'm actually going to be back in, in, in an hour for the Leading to Art cast with Rob Stenzinger. Um, but in the meantime, I will be back doing this stuff next Monday. At uh, Monday, what, what is the date on Monday? Let's find out, shall we? That's what calendars are for, right? Um, yeah, so Monday the 25th, I'll be back at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So once again, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all the, the support and encouragement while I've been going and, and for the great conversation. And I've been Jersey Drozd of all those links up there. Okay, bye.